ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ನರ ಚರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋಜಯ ಮುಧೀರೇ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀ ನಂದನಾಯ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮ Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome for the class, the reading class. So, we were on yesterday. I'm sorry, I just came on 5th canto. We are on 17th. And we'll be moving on to the 18th shloka. Param padam vaishnavaman vaishnavam man ಸೌರುಧಾಪದೇ ಮೊಮೆ taking them into his heart. Purport, in the Bhagavad Gita, Mad Dhamma, my abode, is mentioned several times and according to the version of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna, there exists the unlimited spiritual sky wherein the planets are called Vaipunthas or the abode of the Personality of Godhead. In that sky, which is far, far beyond the material sky and its seven-fold coverings, there is no need of the sun or the moon nor is there necessity of electricity for illumination because the planets are self illuminating and more brilliant than the material suns the pure devotees of the lord are absolutely in harmony with the personality of godhead or in other words they always think of the lord as their only dependable friend and beloved they do not care for any mundane creature up to the status of brahma the lord of the universe only they can definitely have only they can definitely have a clear vision of the vaikuntha planets such pure devotees being perfectly directed by the supreme lord do not create any artificial perplexity in the matter of transcendental understanding by wasting time in discussing what is brahman and what is not brahman or maya nor do they falsely think of themselves as one with the lord or argue that there is no existence of the lord separately or that there is no god at all or that you that living beings are themselves god or that when god incarnates himself as god incarnates himself he assumes a material body nor do they concern themselves with many obscure speculative theories which are in actually so many stumbling blocks on the path of transcendental understanding apart from the class of impersonalists or non devotees there are also classes who pose themselves as devotees of the lord but at heart maintain the idea of salvation by becoming one with the impersonal brahman they wrongly manufacture their own way of devotional service by open debauchery and mislead others who are simpletons or debauches like themselves all these non devotees and debauches are according to vaishwanath chakravarti 
Duratmas or two souls in the dress of Mahatmas or great souls. Such non devotees and debauchees are completely excluded from the list of transcendentalists by the presentation of this particular verse by Shukadev Goswami. So the Vaikuntha planets are factually the supreme residential places called the called the Param Padam. The impersonal Brahma Jyoti is also called the Param Padam due to its being the rays of the Vaikuntha planets as the sun rays are the rays of the sun. In the Bhagavad Gita 14.27, it is clearly said that the impersonal Brahma Jyoti rests on the person of the Lord and because everything rests on the Brahma Jyoti directly and indirectly, everything is generated from the Lord, everything rests on him and after annihilation, everything is birched in him only. Therefore, nothing is independent of him. A pure devotee of the Lord no longer wastes valuable time in discriminating the Brahman from non-Brahman because he knows perfectly well that the Lord Parabrahman by his Brahman energy is interwoven in everything and thus everything is looked upon by a devotee as the property of the Lord. The devotee tries to engage everything in his service and does not create perplexities by falsely lording it over the creation of the Lord. He is so faithful that he engages himself as well as everything else in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In everything, the devotee sees the Lord and he sees everything in the Lord. The specific disturbance created by a Duratma or crooked soul is due to his maintaining that the transcendental form of the Lord is something material. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. So in this... Uh... Seventeenth uh, and eighteen, because we saw actually, um, you know, what is labdo bashanti, but what is the cal caliber of this jiva, uh, or this jivan mukta, uh, you know, is described um, in the seventeenth text. Uh, uh, that what are the symptoms of this labdo bashanti? Uh, such a person, na uh, yatra kalo, he is not affected by time. And uh, that uh, uh, a, a time that controls even the devtas uh, cannot control this particular person. So what to speak of the devtas who themselves are being under the control of time. So there is no influence of the three gunas, nor even the false ego, uh, not even the mahatattva effect uh, this person, uh, affects this person. So if you see in the scriptures or the shastras, time is said to have uh, two portfolios. For the conditioned soul, it acts as a vehicle to carry his karma. And time is described, uh, you know, it is, uh, uh, it is carrying the vehicle for uh, a particular person. And uh, uh, so what... Uh, uh, Whatever the act, uh, you know, this conditioned soul has done, uh, you know, uh, time is carrying the result of those activities. So it is called uh, karma sachiva. He acts as an assistance of uh, time or, uh, uh, you know, unto the pure duties like Prabhupada writes that time does not uh, uh, act on the transcendental platform. Uh, which means that time does not act as a carrier of his own karma in that particular uh, portfolio. So time does not even act for a devotee. So uh, uh, time does not uh, cease to act, you can say. And uh, time carries the orders of the uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead directly. So time takes the portfolio of order carrier of the Supreme Lord. So in the, again, teachings of Lord Kapila also, he is giving actually the nature of time. Uh, that uh, the immediate effect of time is that it instills fear. And as soon as this fear, uh, person uh, sees white hair, then uh, uh, 
uh, he fears that oh i will grow old but it does not instill fear on uh, everyone he says he says that uh, oh, give me one minute I'm just trying to figure out that shloka. Oh, it's this only, yeah. Rupa bhedaspadam divyam kala iti abhityate bhutanam mahad adinam yato bhinna drisham bhayam The time factor who causes the transformation of the various material manifestations is another feature of the personality of Godhead. Anyone who does not know that time is the same supreme personality of godhead is afraid of time factor so if we understand that time is only supreme personality of god then we'll never get afraid of time and uh, we won't uh, uh, you know uh, see the difference between uh, time and the supreme personality of godhead so and those people who have even accepted this material bodies uh, they have identified uh, with the material bodies and those who do not have, you know, bhinna drishyam, uh, the right vision, you can say, uh, that seeing oneself as the soul. So, uh, if one starts seeing oneself as the body uh, and uh, uh, those people who have got this uh, uh, right vision and uh, time instills fear in them. So, uh, therefore, uh, therefore, when an uh, you know elevated devotee or an advanced devotee uh, sees a white hair, he does not uh, he does not uh, fear, or there is no fear instilled in him. Uh, but any person who is on bodily platform, then definitely you know there is fear in him. So uh, uh, again, in another place also, uh, Kapil Muni says that. Uh, I think it's in the 26th chapter. What was that shloka? Hmm. <clears throat> Prabhavam purusham prahu kalam eke yato bhayam Ahankara vimudasya kartum prakriti. So, yeah, please mute yourselves. So, the in, influence of the Supreme Person of Godhead is felt in the time factor which causes fear of death due to the false ego. Anybody who is fearing death, then there is an effect, you know, influence of false ego of the deluded soul who has contacted material nature. So, out of false ego, he is identifying with, you know, the material nature. And such a person, uh, you know, kal bhayo, you know, there is fear in such a person. And uh, whereas pure devotee, even though he may, you know, apparently seem to have a body uh, made of material elements, but uh, because he is not identifying with the body, it does not instill any fear in him. So, he may be... Uh, you know, uh, uh, he may be actually, you know, in uh, the material nature and he must have contacted the material nature. But uh, uh, the, this is very, very, you know, you can say that uh, nicely explained by, you know, uh, Bhishma Dev in uh, when he's talking to actually Yudhishthir Maharaj, when he's saying that, uh, in the first canto, actually, when Yudhishthir Maharaj is talking, Bhishma Dev is talking to Yudhishthir Maharaj, that uh, where, uh, you know, he's lamenting that, you know, I have become the cause of suffering of so many people just because uh, I wanted the kingdom. So many people had to die and what an abnormal act I have uh, performed. So Yudhishthir Maharaj is, you know, uh, taking all the blame upon himself. 
uh, that uh, you know and uh, he is thinking that he is the cause of all this and he starts lamenting so krishna he is bringing the pandavas to bhishma dev so uh, uh, you know bhishma dev is saying that uh, you know so much of uh, what is that shloka he says aho kashtam uh, give me one minute again sorry because with shlokas no it, it's easy to understand the subject matter i think is the 11th or the 13th shloka i don't know श्रेय सही सेंग दैट वॉट ग्रेट सफरिंग एंड टेरबल in justice you all went through the what terrible sufferings and what injustice injustices uh, you all souls had to go through for being the sons of religion personified so dharmaraj is you know yudhishthir is religion personified you did not deserve to remain alive under those tribulations yet you were protected by the brahmanas god and religion so um, he says that you were protected by you know धर्मा यू आर प्रोटेक्टेड बाय द रिलीजन एंड विप्र धर्मा इनफैक्ट इज यूजिंग द वर्ड ओवर यूर इज विप्र धर्मा द यू आर प्रोटेक्टेड बाय यू नो द ब्राह्मणा रिलीजन एंड कृष्णा अच्युता एंड देन ही सेइंग दैट एवरीथिंग इज हैपनिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ टाइम सो अगेन आई थिंक इन द वेरी नेक्स्ट श्लोका ओनली ही सेइंग दैट it is all due to the inevitable time see in my opinion all this is due to the inevitable time under whose control everyone in every planet is carried just as the clouds are carried by the wind so he's saying everything is happening according to the influence of time so don't take all this blame upon yourself why are you taking this blame uh, you know your suffering is brought about by the influence of time so yudhish maharaj you know may say that okay uh, you are uh, you know just uh, uh, you, uh, you know meetha meetha you can say you know sugar coating uh, it uh, and uh, you to, you call it time but it is like one of the karmas then i am suffering because of my own wrong doings therefore time is just acting as the carrier of karmas so why are you telling that you know uh you know time uh, because it is the influence of time uh, why can't you say that it is uh, uh, that uh, it is the cause of the own or own karma that we are suffering so this is what is desirable in your saying so bhishma is saying that no 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 you you know you were uh, uh, you are the only one uh you know you know only uh, you are aware of only one portfolio of time actually uh and he says that no uh then there is another uh, thing he explains in the very next shloka only he says that see how wonderful is the influence of inevitable time it is irreversible otherwise how can there be reverses in the presence of king yudhishthir the son of the demigod controlling religion bhima the great fighter with a club the great bowman arjuna with his mighty weapon gandiva and above all the lord the direct well wisher of the pandavas so uh, yudhishthir maharaj's caliber is such that uh, if my mind says it has to be right it cannot be you know uh, a dharma act and bhishma says that you are dharma suta you are dha, you the, the the son of dharma how can you perform any adharma activity uh, only if you perform an adharma act time will carry the results of your adharma so uh, 
and uh, you will suffer. So you have Bhima, you have Arjuna uh, as your, uh, you know, uh, uh, besides you, then you have Krishna also, who is the ever well-wishing friend. Do you think that, uh, you know, uh, Krishna will allow uh, to have to perform any, some adharmic act? Uh, so in spite of all that, when you are getting suffering, you understand that it is not due to your own karma. Then Bhishma, you know, he says that, uh, 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 ahead he is saying that, that, uh, best of the of Bharata, I maintain therefore that all this is within the plan of the Lord. He is saying that it is the will of the Lord. It is the uh, plan of the Lord and time is only carrying this will of Krishna. Whatever is the desire of Krishna or will of Krishna, it is just carrying, accepting the inconceivable plan of the Lord, you must follow it. So you are now appointed the and so now two portfolios. One is time is acting as a wheel of uh, karma for those who want to actually, you know, condition souls ke liye. It is acting as a vehicle to carry the karma. But for the devotees, time is carrying the will of the Lord. It is not Krishna's desire that, okay, these devotees, that is why I always say that whenever a person becomes a devotee, you know, Krishna takes uh, control of his life and Krishna is orchestrating his life and uh, nobody else. He himself is also not orchestrating his life. So a lot about, uh, you know, mm, time in this particular shloka in this this and then further he says that in the 18th shloka uh, not in this particular 18th shloka in our 18th shloka back to 2.2.18 so he's saying that okay what this yogi is and what are his internal convictions uh, are uh, you know nature of his uh, paramatma uh, you know, meditating on the yogi. So he's saying that uh, over here he's saying that see, Param Padam Vaishnava Manam. He's saying he perfectly understands this personal feature of the Lord. That is the Brahman feature of the Lord. And then he's saying that uh, Yan Neti Neti. Then he's saying that. Uh, that which the Shastras describe as the Brahman feature of the Lord, not this, not that, neti neti, no, not this, not that, of this material world. And then he is saying that uh, Atat Ut Shishru Shavaha. He is saying that he, he is desiring to give up everything that is not related to the Supreme Lord to achieve liberation. He wants to give up everything. And he gives up also this uh, improper intelligence uh, which uh, he says that, uh, uh, no, I will give up this uh, Im improper intelligence. And what he does is, he is avoiding everything. He does not want anything that is uh, not related to the Lord. And at every moment he is embracing what? He is embracing Padam, Padam, Pade, Pade. He's every moment, Pade, Pade means every moment he is embracing the lotus feet of the Lord. And uh, he is meditating on the Supreme. So uh, he is absolutely in harmony with the Supreme Lord. And he does not create any perplexities for himself. Like many times what happens now? And we invite troubles. But no, he is very much there that, uh, no, I want to just meditate on the lotus feet of the Lord. So let's go and see the next. Sorry, we took a lot of time with these two shlokas only. Because, you know, it is very uh, important to understand. We say time, but... Even I myself didn't know that time had two portfolios. But yeah, now we understood that, yes, time has to this, that for a normal person, you know, it is carrying his karmas. But for, uh, you know, a devotee, it is carrying the will of the Lord. 
so very important it was to understand so the next is the 19th shloka is इत्थम मुनिस्तु परम मेद व्यवस्थितो विज्ञान दृक वीर सुरंधिता सयह स्वपार्शिना पिंड्य गुदम ततो अनिल थानेशु पटसन थानेशु पटस सुन्न मये जित्व कलम Lakshmi Narayan Prabhu, please read the purport and translation both. Hare Krishna Mataji Dhanupram. Translation. By the strength of the scientific knowledge, one should be well situated in absolute relation and thus be able to extinguish all material desires. One should then give up the material body by blocking the air hole through which tool is evacuated with the heel of one's foot and by lifting the life air from one place to another in the six primary places purport there are many duratmas who claim to have realized themselves as brahman and yet are unable to conquer material desires in the bhagavad gita 18.54 it is clearly explained that an absolutely self realized soul becomes completely aloof from all material desires material desires are based on the false ego of the living being and are exhibited by his childish and useless activities to conquer the laws of material nature and by his desire to lord it over the resources of the five elements with such a mentality one is led to believe in the strength of material science with its discovery of atomic energy and space travel by mechanical vehicles and by such tiny advancements in material sciences science the false egoist try to challenge even the strength of the supreme lord who can finish all man's tiny endeavors in less than a second the well situated self or brahman realized soul perfectly understand that the supreme brahman or the personality of god is all powerful vasudeva and that he the self realized living being is a part and parcel of the supreme whole as such this his constitutional position is to cooperate with him in all respects in the transcendental relation of the served and the survivor such a self realized soul pleases to exhibit his useless activities of attempting to lord it over material nature being scientifically well informed he fully engages himself in faithful devotion to the lord the expert yogi who has thoroughly practiced the control of life life fair by the prescribed method of the yoga system is advised to quit the body as follows he should plug up the evacuating hole with the heel of the foot and then progressively move the life air on and on to six places the navel abdomen heart chest palate eyebrows and cerebral pit controlling the life air by the prescribed yogic process is mechanical and the practice is more or less a physical endeavor for spiritual perfection in olden days such practice was very common for the transcendentalist for the mode of life and character in those days were favorable but in modern days when the influence of kali age is so disturbing practically everyone is untrained in this art of bodily exercise concentration of the mind is more easily attained in these days by the chanting of the holy name of the lord the results are more effective than those derived from the inner exercise of the life here thank you mataji hari krishna thank you so much so actually from this uh, 19th shloka uh, to the 21st shloka he will say how this yogi by practicing you know this uh, shad chakra yoga is going to finally achieve uh, liberation so we will just see ahead नाभ्यास्तिमृदिधिरोप्यतस्मान्दुदानगत्तस्मान्दुदानगत्तस्मान्दुदानगत्तस्मान्दुदानगत्तस्मान्दुदानगत्तस्मान्दुदानगत्त
the meditative devotee should slowly push up the life air from the navel to the heart from there to the chest and from there to the root of the palate he should search out the proper places with intelligence purport there are six circles of the moment of the life air and the intelligent bhakti yogi should search out these places with intelligence and in a meditative mood among these mentioned above in the swad swadhisthana chakra or the power house of the life air and above this just below the abdomen and navel is the mani puraka chakra when upper space is further searched out in the heart one reaches the ananta chakra and further up when the life air is placed at the root of the palate once reaches the vishuddhi chakra vishuddhi chakra yeah hari krishna hari krishna <clears throat> तस्मादुर्भ्रुवोरनतरमुन्नत निरुद्ध सप्तायतनोपेक्ष स्थित मुहूर्ता अकुंता दृष्टिर्भिदमूर्धन विसृज पर अनुप्रभु प्लीज रीड दि ट्रांसलेशन एंड पोपट बोथ ट्रांसलेशन Thereafter, the bhakti yogi should push the life air up between the eyebrows, and then, blocking the seven outlets of the life air, he should maintain his aim for going back home, back to Godhead. If he is completely free from all desires for material enjoyment, he should then. reach the cerebral the cerebral hole and give up his material connections having gone to the supreme purport the process of giving up all material connections and returning home back to god is the supreme is recommended herein the condition is that one should be completely freed from desire for material enjoyment there are different grades of material enjoyments in respect to duration of life and sensual gratification the highest plane of sensual enjoyment for the longest period of life is mentioned in the bhagavad gita 9.20 all are but material enjoyments and one should be thoroughly convinced that he has no need of such a long duration of life even in the brahma loka planet he must return home back to godhead and must not be attracted by any amount of material facilities in bhagavad gita 2.59 it is said that this sort of material detachment is possible to attain when one is acquainted with the supreme association of life param drishtava nirvartate one cannot be freed from material attach- attraction unless he has complete understanding of the nature of spiritual life the propaganda by a certain class of impersonalists that spiritual life is void of all varieties is dangerous propaganda to mislead the living beings into becoming more and more attracted by material enjoyments as such people with a poor fund of knowledge cannot have any conception of the param the supreme they try to stick to the varieties of material enjoyments although they may flatter themselves as being brahman realized souls such intelligent persons cannot have any conception of the param as mentioned in this verse and therefore they cannot reach the supreme the devotees are full knowledge of the spiritual world the personality of god and his transcendental association 
in unlimited spiritual planets called Vekunta Lokas. Herein, Akunta Drishtir is mentioned. Akunta and Vekunta convey the same import. And only one who has his aim fixed upon that spiritual world and personal association with the Godhead can give up his material connections even while living in the material world. This Param and the Param Dham mentioned in several places in the Bhagavad Gita are one and the same thing. One goes to the Param Dham does not return to the material world. This freedom is not possible even by reaching the topmost loka of the material world. The life air passes through seven openings, namely two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, and one mouth. Generally, it passes through the mouth at the time of an ordinary man's death. But the yogi, as above mentioned, who controls the life air in his own way, generally releases the life air by puncturing the cerebral hole in the head. The yogi therefore blocks up all the above mentioned seven openings so that the life air will naturally burst forth through the cerebral hole. This is the sure sign of a great devotee leaving the material connection. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you very much. So, how this yogi by, you know, uh, practicing of this uh, Shad Chakra Yoga is, go is finally going to achieve liberation. So, even in uh, Bhagavad Gita, the uh, eighth chapter, <clears throat> Uh, there Shad Chakra is mentioned. So he says that uh, now the yogi has reached to the stage of this uh, Labdho Pashanti and he sits down and he chooses uh, the nine holes of the body using the heels. He closes the mouth of the anus and then by various other Vedic practices he chooses uh, all other uh, eight holes and now only one hole is remaining, that is the Brahma Randra. Brahma Randra is like, uh, you know, the talu that we save in the head that we have. Okay, just right above the head. When, you know, the baby is very small, what we do is we fill in oil in that and we, one full big katori of oil, you know, gets immediately absorbed. So that is actually our Brahma Randra. So, he slowly raises the life air from the Muladhar Chakra uh, to the Agyan Chakra. So in the body, these all chakras, you know, they are like the subtle energy centers. And at the, uh, and at the navel, uh, the Swadhin Chakra is there and the Manipur Chakras are situated. So in, in the heart region then, uh, the... Anahat uh, chakra is situated and then the throat region, the Vishuddha chakra is situated and this uh, uh, Agyana chakra is uh, situated near the eyebrows. This Muladhar chakra is, you know, below the navel. So when we are also, when we apply Tilak, if you see at all these 12 places, uh, we are, uh, mm, they are strategically located in such a way that uh, we are surrounded by these six energies, energy centers, you can say. So when we say Om Keshavaya Namo while applying Tilak, and when we are chanting these mantras, we are not only declaring that this gross body of the Lord is a temple of the Supreme, but also it acts as a purifying uh, or it acts to purify these subtle energy centers also. So it is not only purifying the gross body, but it is also purifying the subtle body. So when we, uh, when we consciously chant, so it is purifying the subtle body also, not only the gross body. So this yogi, what is he doing? He is lifting 
his life air and slowly it brings to the agyan chakra which is actually near the eyebrows you can say in between the eyebrows and he closes these nine holes he becomes <clears throat> uh, he closes when he is closing these nine holes uh, uh, because the soul could you know pass through any of the nine holes so this is actually a mechanical way of leaving the body and shila propand in the bhagavad gita 8th chapter he is writing he saying then then he forces the life air to leave through the brahma randra that is our talu and because the scripture mentions that uh, the hole through which the soul leaves it indicates the destination so uh, <clears throat> any of the higher holes indicates a higher destination sometimes if you see people leave they are uh, uh, this through eyes the eyes are open so which means what from the eyes the soul has uh, you know left so the most auspicious is actually brahma randra because it is confirmed that it will uh, he will at least achieve uh, liberation so uh, in the brahma madhava gaudiya line the sanyasis when they are ready to leave their body they sit in samadhi and one of their disciples they bring a coconut and break it on his head at the right opportune uh, you know right time uh, in order to you know uh, ease this uh, passage of the soul through this brahma randra and uh, it is called as uh, kapal moksha so sometimes in shri vaishnava line also it is followed so this soul directly achieves liberation through the brahma randra and the soul merges in the brahma jyoti and this is the uh, you know end like you know uh, for that particular uh, this that he he achieves that liberation so this is how it is uh, connected let's go to the next shloka यदि प्रयासन नृप परामेष्ठम व्याहाय सामूत यदिहारम अष्टाधिपत्य गुण सन्निवाय स एव गेन्मनसेन्द्रिय Yeah, it's a long purpose. Yeah. Sadi Madhiji, please read this purpose. Translation both. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. However, okay, if a yogi maintains a desire for improved material enjoyment like transference to the topmost planet Brahmaloka or the achievement of eightfold perfection travel in the outer space with the Uh, by Kaya Sir, our situation situation in one of the millions of planets, then he has to take away with him the materially molded mind and senses. Purpose: the upper stages of the planet planetary system. There are facilities thousands and thousands of times greater from per material enjoyment than in the lower planetary system. The topmost planetary system consists. Planets like Brahmaloka and Dhruva Loka, the pole star, and all of them are situated beyond Mahat Loka. The inhabitants of those planets are empowered with eightfold achievements of mystic perfection. They do not have to learn and practice mystic process of yoga perfection and achieve the power of becoming small like a particle. Anima Siddhi are lighter than a soft feather. Lagima Siddhi. They do not have to get anything. Anything and everything for any day and every day. Prapti Siddhi and to become heavier than the heaviest Mahima Siddhi. To act freely, even to create something wonderful or to handle anything, it will Ishitva Siddhi. To control the material elements, Vas Vasitva Siddhi. To possess such power as will never be never be frustrated in any desire, Prapti Siddhi. काम 
all these experiences are as common as natural gifts for the inhabitants for those higher planets they do not require any mechanical help to travel in outer space they can move and travel at will from one from from planet one planet to another planet uh, with no time the inhabitants of the earth cannot move even to the nearest planet except by mechanical vehicle like space space craft but high, uh, highly talented inhabitants of such a higher planet can do everything very easily since a materialist is generally inquisitive to experience what is actually in the planetary system he wants to see everything personally as inquisitive persons tour all over the world to gain direct local experience the less intelligent transcendent is similarly desire to have some experience of those planets about which he has heard so many wonderful things the yogi can however easily fulfill his desire by going there with the present materialistic mind and senses the prime inclination of the materialistic mind is to lord it over the material world and all the siddhis mentioned above are pieces of domination over the world the devotees of the lord are not ambitious to dominate a false and temporary phenomenon on the contrary a devotee wants to be dominated by the supreme predominator the lord a desire to serve the lord the supreme predominator is spiritual or transcendental and one has to attain this purification of purification of the mind and senses to get admission into the spiritual kingdom with the materialistic mind one can reach the best planet in the universe but no one can enter the kingdom of god senses are called spiritually purified when they are not involved in sense gratification senses require engagement and when the senses are engaged totally in transcendental loving service of the lord they have no chance to become contaminated by material infection hare krishna mata ji thank you dhanyawad thank you thank you very much we'll just go to the next shloka ट्रांसलेशन इन पोपट बोर्ड Yes, Mataji. Translation: The transcendentalists are concerned with the spiritual body. <coughs> As such, by the strength of their devotional service, <coughs> austerities, mystic power, and transcendental knowledge, their movements are unrestricted within and beyond the material worlds. The fruited, the fruitative workers, the fruity workers, or the gross materialist can never move in such an unrestricted manner. For part, the materialistic scientists endeavor to reach other planets by mechanical vehicles is only a futile attempt. One can, however, reach heavenly planets by virtuous activities, but one can never <clears throat> expect to go beyond Swarga or Janaloka by such mechanical or materialistic activities, either gross or subtle. The transcendentalists. who have nothing to do with the gross material body can move anywhere within or beyond the material worlds within the material worlds they move in the plan- planetary systems of the mahar janas tapas and satyaloka and beyond the material worlds they can move in the vaikunthas as unrestricted space man mata ji Mm-hmm. Narad Muni yes Narad Muni is one of the examples of such spacemen and Durvasa Muni is one of such mystics by the strength of devotional service austerities mystic powers and transcendental knowledge everyone can move like Narad Muni or Durvasa Muni it is said that Durvasa Muni travel throughout the entirety of material space and part of spiritual space within one year only the speed of the transcendentalist can never be attained by the gross or subtle materialists 
थैंक यू मतुज हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण सो नाउ इफ दिस प्रैक्टिसिंग योगी इज ही ही डिजायर्स टू चेक आउट दिस और इफ ही डिजायर्स टू यू नो सी दिस नंदन कानन प्ले ग्राउंड ऑफ दी देवताज और इफ ही डिजायर्स टू ट्राई आउट दीज मिस्टिक सिद्धिज देन वाइल दी परमात्मा यू नो मेडिटेटर योगी इज फ्री ऑफ ऑल दिस डिजायर्स सो ही इज गिविंग अप इज सटल बॉडी एंड ही गोज टू दी ब्रह्म ज्योति वेर एल्स this virat roop meditation meditating yogi he because he still has traces of you know desire to enjoy so when he leaves this body he travels with the subtle body therefore this subtle body is uh, uh, if the subtle body when it goes uh, he will enjoy so uh, again um, in the third canto kapil dev he is uh, describing uh, one such situation where during the time of uh, brahma's death after his uh, uh, you know time of uh, uh, you know duration whatever years brahma ji has it is over so when the whole universe gets destroyed and when all these souls who are not ready yet ready for complete liberation then uh, they go and merge into the body of karan daksha vishnu so these jivas are forcibly you know uh, stripped of the, their gross and subtle bodies so when the jiva is residing into this body of karan daksha vishnu he is uh, forcibly stripped of this subtle body also but he is not free of desires desires are still there so the jiva is thinking that he is forcibly uh, you know given uh, self realization but kapil uh, muni he says that uh, he is describing that as soon as this jiva when he wakes up when there is again recreation he sees that uh, oh i am dead i am dead and then he says that uh, if i am dead then how am i thinking right a dead person cannot think so then he realizes oh i am not dead and uh, till now i was identifying myself with the gross and subtle body but now i realize that no i am not the gross body and i am not the subtle body i am the soul so that is that that is his self realization you can say so that self realization will uh, give him great bliss uh, to this particular yogi who is endeavoring uh, uh, for uh, you know um, that particular bliss so it gives him great uh, uh, joy it gives sorry it gives him great distress to this so he thinks that unfortunately you know i am not this gross body and subtle body i am just filled with all these desires but i have no capacity to fill, fulfill all these desires also so he is in great misery because his desires are not fulfilled so we may say that okay uh, why is the supreme lord so you know mm, mm, what is that word mm, why is the supreme lord so cruel uh, to give uh, you know mm, one this gross body and the subtle body both and bewilder this little jiva so if um, he does not cover only the living entities with gross body and subtle body then it will be such a great help for the living entity but he is saying that actually not because the living entity uh, becomes all the more miserable because he has all those desires but he has no vehicle to fulfill those desires right but um, uh, so he is still uh, just patiently waiting for the time when again there will be creation so that he can fulfill all those desires uh, and uh, 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 whatever is you know he, uh, so it is like um, it is due to the mercy of krishna that uh, you know krishna is giving the 
subtle body also and the gross body also said so that this living entity he does not uh, stray frustrated for a long time why will the father you know desire that my children remain frustrated right so therefore the this yogi is not yet free from desires and he still has uh, desires to enjoy so he has to carry his subtle body also he cannot give it up with his subtle body and he will need it you know at the later time because uh, of course this is not a, a period uh, whose only goal of life is uh, you know to enjoy so like if somebody is traveling in the train from bombay to delhi and uh, uh, we go in the pantry car to eat some you know samosas but after a few hours uh, we eat jalebi vada etc everything but we are very clear about our destination or goal that uh, no no we want to go to delhi only so uh, since we are on the train we feel like enjoying uh, and traveling into the pantry car eating something but the purpose uh, is uh, to go uh, you know go uh, uh, to go into the train Uh, not to eat uh, you know samosa or jalebi or you know other sandwiches and you know? no the purpose is go to actually delhi so this virat roop meditator uh, yogi he is not uh, you know he is not an out and out karmi you can say uh, having only desires to enjoy no his goal is very clear he wants to achieve liberation but in between you know little little he gets distracted with uh, samosa and jalebi or with this material allurements uh, 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 and um, mm, that uh, he will try to enjoy this also and that so he will try uh, you know jana lok also and tapa lok also and uh, this planet that planet uh, to stay but uh, just to experience it for some time and then eventually what he will do he will attain that same liberation which the paramatma uh, meditator yogi is also attaining but what is the difference between this virat roop meditator and uh, this paramatma meditator this virat roop meditator will reach that destination after very very long time but this paramatma meditator he will immediately achieve liberation so eventually he uh, realizes that you know what uh, uh, you know why did i have all these you know desires or uh, why did i uh, uh, you know uh, you know get distracted i would have you know achieved uh, this mukti very much before only so uh, he actually he repents also but then uh, eventually uh, he will um, get that uh, liberation for sure so okay we will uh, stop over here and meet on monday there is still a little explanation but uh, maybe we'll take it up on monday so dear devotees thank you so much for uh, your active participation in reading the shrimad bhagavatam श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय गौर भक्त वृंद की जय हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू माता जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा